Hi, I'm Stu McKamey of the USDA Systematic Entomology Lab. And in this presentation, we'll be looking at Echinorhynchia, the family groups, the superfamilies of Echinorhynchia, and we'll look at the families of Cercopoidea, the families of Membricoidea, and then lastly, some common subfamilies of Cicadelidae or leaf hoppers. Let's see where Echinorhynchia falls in the classification of the order. There are three suborders, the Heteroptera, or true bugs, the Sternorhynchia, scales, white flies, and aphids, and the Echinorhynchia, which I like to call the true hoppers. In this suborder, there are four superfamilies, the Cicadoidea, or cicadas, the Cercopoidea, or frog hoppers, or, sp or spittle bugs, the Membricoidea, for tree hoppers and leaf hoppers, and the Fulgoroidea, for plant hoppers. The first superfamily is Cicadoidea, or cicadas. There are three families. And no matter what the size or color, they pretty much all look like cicadas. So if you have any, any doubt, you can count the number of ocelli on the vertex. There are three, as opposed to zero to two in the other groups. There are two fulgoroid families that have a third ocellus, but it's down on the face, on the front clipius. So cicadas are the only, only group with three ocelli on the vertex. And that's all I'm going to say about cicadas. Uh, but features for the other Echinorhynchia superfamilies, there are four features you, you need to look at. The face, are the sides of the face, front clipius, strongly edged or rounded? Are the antennae located directly underneath the eyes or further forward? Are the tibia of the hind legs with uh, just a few large cedi or a row of smaller cedi? And is the pronotum in dorsal view uh, rounded or or uh, does it extend posteriorly over the scutellum? There's a mnemonic for the taxa you have to remember. You're a fat pig, F-A-T-P. The frog hoppers, or cercopoidea, and tree hoppers and leaf hoppers, membricoidea, and the plant hoppers, fulgoroidea. The same mnemonic can be used to remember the four characters you need to know. The face, for the frontoclipious lateral margins, the antennae, their position, the tibia of the hind leg, their spines and, and CD, or cadotaxi, it's called, and their pronotum, the shape and extent in dorsal view. So first let's look at the face and antennae, those first two features. In fulgoroidea, you have a, a, an edge or keel or a carina, uh, sorry, on the side of the face, and the antennae are directly below the eyes. In membricoidea and cercopoidea, the, fa the uh, face is rounded, and the antennae are further forward, sometimes completely in front of the eye. Notice here that cercopoidea, the frog hoppers, join with the membricoidea. Now let's look at the tibia of the hind leg. In, you notice here the cercopoidea join fulgoroidea in this feature, and having a few large spines on the hind tibia. In membricoidea, there are rows of larger spines uh, small spines, relatively small spines, but many, many of them, no matter what family you're looking at in the membricoidea. Now let's look at the families of, of uh, Cercopoidea, looking at the pronotum, the last character. In F40, it's W-shaped, the posterior margin, and generally they're elongate. In Clastopterity, it's also W-shaped, the posterior margin, but the, these are small subcircular species. And in the Cercopidae, the posterior margin of the pronotum is almost straight across, and again, the body is usually elongate. Now, again, looking at the pronotum, let's cover the families of Membricoidea. And in leafhoppers, the posterior margin of the pronotum does not extend very far over the scutellum. This whole triangle is the scutellum, and there's often a rise halfway down, and the pronotum does not reach that rise, except in uh, one subfamily that's never been intercepted. In a Italianity, the pronotum is extended down to that rise, so you don't see like two sections of the scutellum. And in membracity, the pronotum extends at least to the, to the end of the scutellum, even if only a little bit, but it usually covers the whole body. There's another family, but again, it's never been intercepted. Now we're going to look at the 
five, sub, five most common subfamilies of leafhoppers is Cicadelidae. These five subfamilies include over 15,000 species, which is three quarters of all leafhoppers. First, the Agalliani. They're, most of them are easily recognizable because they have two large spots on the head or, or pronotum. And the ocelli are on the face here and here, not visible from dorsal view, and not connected by any facial sutures. In the sharpshooters, the cicatiline, the ocelli are on top of the head, the vertex or crown it's sometimes called, and they are attained by sutures, which you can't really see in this picture, but under a scope you will be able to see them. And the frontal clippius is swollen because these feed on xylem and are, include some very important vectors because they can carry bacteria. In the delta cephalini, the ocelli are on the face, uh, on the facial margin or the vertex margin, very close to the eyes or further from the eyes, and they are attained by these facial sutures. The, the face is not swollen because these do not feed on xylem, they feed on phloem and also include some important vectors, the phytoplasms. The Jiponini have, like the uh, Cicatiline, like sharpshooters, have ocelli visible in dorsal view They're on top of the head. Uh, there's some pigmentation here, but there are no sutures that connect them, no sutures coming up from the frontal clippius that connect to the ocelli. And often on the pronotum, there are three going across. Lastly, we're looking at the Tiflis sabini, which have zero, which have no ocelli, zero ocelli on the head, and the forewings lack cross veins at their bases. No cross veins there. Lastly, I want to, to uh, direct you to some electronic resources. For the valid names of world membracoidea, you can go to uh, my database on the Catalog of Life website. For, the, for images of almost all species of sharpshooters, which you can search by taxon and distribution, you can go to this website by Mike Wilson, his colleague, and myself. And interactive keys to genera of Delta cephalini, Tiflis sabini, and, the, and one tribe of sharpshooters. And a guide to subfamilies overall is at Christopher Dietrich's homepage at Illinois Natural History Survey. And some PDF resources that you should have available are the North American genera of leafhoppers by Paul Oman, 1949, the Agalliani of North America, species keys, and by Oman, 1934, and the Neotropical species of Delta cephalini and some related fa subfamilies by Lenovori in 1959. Now, all of the, all three of these. If you look at the dates, you can guess that they're pretty out of date, and that's true. But they're still the only sources that cover so many species of a fauna. Lastly, my collab these are my collaborators. Thank you. Are there any questions? How many species of Homolodisca are there, and where are they located? There are about 17 species total, and they most of them occur. We have three in the U.S., but, but most of them occur in Mexico and all the way down into uh, South, South uh, Argentina, I'd say, Argentina and, and uh, probably Bolivia, though I haven't seen specimens from there. And it's important to note, to recognize that just like the glass-wing sharpshooter, they probably all have different biologies and they are all potential vectors of Xylella fastidiosa that the bacteria that causes citrus chlorosis in Brazil and Pierce's disease in the U.S. Is there a combination of uh, characters that can be used to identify the superfamily or can we just use one character and be able to identify to a superfamily level? Well, I gave four characters because that those are the first four character, characters you should check if you have any questions, but most superfamilies do have just one character you need to look at. For cicadas, you need to just check the, the three ocelli on the vertex for uh, that cicadoidea. For the fulgoroidea, you can either look at the edges of the, on the frontal clippius of the face, 
or you can look at the position of the antenna. Both of those are will both of those single characters will work to identify fulgoroidia with the antenna being directly below the eye. Membricoidia, the leaf hoppers and tree hoppers, um, you just have to look at the tibia, just that one character and see if there are a few large spines or many smaller spines. But Cercopoidia, the remaining superfamily, you have to look at both the, the edges of the face, if it's rounded versus carinate or keeled, and the tibia to see how many spines there are, if there are just a few large spines or a row of, of small spines. What are the other families of Cercopoidia and how would I recognize them as not being one of these three? Well, besides the three families I covered, Aphrophoridae, Clasopteridae, and Cercopidae, there are two other families. One is Macarodidae, an Asian, mostly Asian family, and most of those species have this cutellum developed into a large, very conspicuous spine. And the last remaining family was recently described, it's Epigidae, it's a neotropical uh, family, and they are recognized by having a non-swollen clypeus that has a definite keel in the middle. It's thought that they either don't feed as adults or, or at least don't feed on xylem.